Microbursts is a book of short lyric pieces that explore spaces between life and death, poetry and memoir, and making and letting go. It's a collaborative work in which language and form work together to create space for readers to meet what can be complex and difficult subjects like illness, crisis, creativity, and grief. The collaboration for Microbursts was born a few days after my mom died and when Manda and I were talking about the series of essays or short pieces that I'd been writing and she wondered what it would look like if it was made into like an artist book, if she could do anything with that and if it would alter how they were read and I loved that idea and we had a, quite a long discussion about I think in particular the narratives of the piece, so my dad's and my mom's and the more kind of central narrative that I guess is mine as I kind of look at the world and process that. From there I don't remember how we did all of the discussions and how we came to the iterations. I do know that the structure of the three narratives was there from pretty early on and that really helped me edit the work and I could decrease like references to my mom and my dad because the placement on the page really showed who we were with at that time. And then a lot of Amanda's ideas were I think really about how the language and the space came off the page. So the work with punctuation and definitely the claustrophobic spacing that you come to sometimes see like with the microbursts or the short tight frames really alter the way that we can read the piece. Uh, it, gives a lot of space for us to consider it. And the other thing it did is the book basically has a structure of elegy, a subtitle for a long time was two elegies. And what the formatting does for the book is I think create m opportunities for different momentum and different, yeah, again, a sense of claustrophobia or openness and definitely space for consideration for the reader to read themselves into the text or to take away. So although the text has is based in my experience. I don't view it as an autobiography. I definitely view it more as a, a poetry and, and with elements of memoir and it's crafted. And what I love about the design and format of it is it really, that, that adds to the knowledge that you know that it's a constructed text. And rather than that putting distance between the text and the reader, I feel as if it gives an invitation to you, to us, to really enter into the text and, and live with each piece and then decide when you turn the page to meet the next one. The collaboration came about after I'd read Elizabeth's first manuscript of it, which was just a straight shot written piece of text. And what really occurred to me when I was reading it was just the intensity of it, the complexity of it, the craft of it, but also what arose in me were these questions about how you deal with the unknowns, how you deal with the spaces, how you deal with these points in moments of crisis when words aren't enough. And because of my own practice, um, I make a lot of artists' books. It really spoke to me about the possibility of how we might use the tropes of the artist's book to reformat the work to speak to all these different questions that each of us were holding and speaking with each other about. Microbursts is basically rooted in the illness and death of both of my parents. It focuses on the space when illness, maybe even chronic illness, becomes something where you know that someone's going to die and the unique emotion and crisis that can evolve from there or that you live through uh, with that. So the, the short lyric pieces are quite intense. They are incredibly poetic but also narratively driven. So there's this uh, invitation to go through the text and it is an allegoric form so we, we know the narrative that's going to happen. And what I think the typography in this the, the formatting, the design do is create a lot of uh, momentum and moments of attention within that. So Amanda's work has done a, a lot of that and I'll let her talk a little bit about that, I think. There's a piece in particular where the text that Elizabeth created really lent itself to becoming something else. Um, it's the 14th February morning 
and it begins if he can walk, if he can support his weight, if he can make it unaided to the toilet, if he can remember what it was like to be here in his house. Curious. One of the things Elizabeth teaches me or has taught me is how to be a close reader. And what really struck me in the close reading of this piece was just the amount of ifs in that piece and the pauses between them. And it really lent itself to just the exploration of just some of the words and phrases and what would happen if you extrapolated some of the words and phrases for them just to become something else entirely. So on the page where we talk about, or where the 14th of February morning piece is written, on the opposite page there's just this collection of words and segments from that piece and it works in relation to it, but actually also really works, I think, as a separate piece where the white of the page takes up the bulk of the page, but it's just these little moments of words that really kind of speak to what the book actually, I think, is about. And some of the photographs of the lake, Lake Michigan, which is really near Elizabeth's parents' house, or um, there's a photograph of the L ride downtown to Chicago, and images create this space between the words, so you're not immediately jumping from one essay to another, but within the frame of what it was like to be in that situation, the lake and trips downtown were also these moments of pause and sanctuary and relief. So it's kind of interesting to think about how the book will be read by people who don't know Chicago or don't know the lake, but I think the images were there just to have this kind of these moments of pause and quiet before you move on. In the book, grief and creativity are intertwined. The pieces were written as originally journal entries, uh, kind of making note of the experience that I had when my parents were getting iller and iller and, and as each kind of came up and, and had a terminal diagnosis. And they were a way for me to process the experience. But I was also writing my doctorate at the time and I was writing around the essay form and what it could do and and it was linked to how I was able to do that work, um, to have them being ill and dying as I was also trying to do this large work that I was holding. And they found their way in, into, into the thesis as well. Uh, and so grief and creativity became one, and it is interwoven into that discussion of living grief and illness and crisis and form. And for me, again, they meld. They meld what is possible in the text. Uh, that form and subject aren't different, that they work together, and that craft of it is an expression of attention and, and draws the reader's attention to detail and to experience. Writing this book took a combination of the ability to be within the hardest moments of what were really difficult and just layers and layers and layers of crisis and to write and craft pieces from that and then that process of editing and making the book in collaboration with Amanda and making it the thing that we have meant that I needed to revisit those moments again and again. And one of the things I've come to realize is that grief changes the atoms in your body. And then you go back and each time you edit and each time you, read, you approach the book again, it changes them again. So it's been a very intimate moment where you have to use all of the facilities. You have to really stay connected to the emotions and then you also have to think critically and figure out how it's going to work as it goes out into the world and so it can communicate to readers. So it was an incredibly um, difficult and complicated and incredibly satisfying process too. When Jess asked the question about what the book was as an object, I immediately thought about Lake Michigan. And I think it's because it's always there but it's always changing. It's 
a place that, as I said, has been a place of sanctuary because of, there's that time and that kind of feeling of being at the water and the kind of infinity of it. But it's such a beautiful place to walk along the light shifts and changes. Um, sometimes it's frozen, sometimes, you know, the sun is just glints off it and it's golden. Um, there's other times where you can't see it for the mist and fog. And I think it really kind of has an emotional resonance, uh, resonance I think, for Elizabeth and Elizabeth's family. But I think in relation to how it sits within and beyond the book, I think the lake's a pretty good metaphor for what the book as object could be. I think of microbursts as a beautiful object that has a weight to it. It doesn't settle necessarily easily in your hands and in your consideration, but it is also comforting and alive.